Well, along comes Halloween. And what made you do Halloween? Did you want to make a, a horror movie because that would be easy to sell? The financiers, financiers came to me first. Uh -huh. And Erwin Yablons was the guy who released Assault. And he came to me and he said, I've got this guy, Mustafa Akkad, who wants to put up money for low budget films. And he has 250,000 bucks he wants to throw into a horror movie. And we want to make something called The Babysitter Murders, where these babysitters are stalked by this killer. And Irwin's idea was that every young teenage girl can relate to babysitting. So I said, fine, if I can have a final cut and I can have my name above the title. And uh, so I never really got paid <laughs> really? I didn't film a salary, but I got a percentage, so I did pretty well. Now, being such a Hitchcock fan, did the fact that Jamie Lee Curtis was Janet Lee's daughter have anything at all to do with the casting? Deborah brought that up, thought that would be a great idea. Yeah. Isn't this cool? Eh, it was okay. <laughs> she read for the part. She was absolutely fabulous. She was 18 years old? Yeah, 18 or 19, something like that. Maybe even younger, I'm not sure. So off we went, we made the film for no, nothing, for peanuts. We shot it in 20 some odd days and uh, got Donald Pleasance. Donald Pleasance was there for, oh, was he there for four or five days, you know? You originally wanted Christopher Lee for I that tried part. Christopher Lee, I tried Peter Cushing, oh. just uh, because of the old Hammer films. They wouldn't hear of it. Really? They wouldn't hear of it. Wouldn't, didn't want to have anything to do with me. <laughs> Peter Cushing's agent told us, you know, uh, Deborah Hill called him and asked him, said, now after Star Wars, they're making movies about him. He's not in a movie about something else. Uh -huh. So I thought, okay. But Donald Pleasance was one of my favorite actors. I, I just loved his, his unique uh, uh, screen presence and ability to deliver lines. You know, it, it's unexpected what he'll say or do. So casting is really crucial. Oh yeah. But it's all who's available and can we afford right. them? And do they want to do it? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, do you face that often where you don't get your first, second, third choice? Always. Yeah. Yeah. And I shouldn't say that. No. I always get my first choice. <laughs> always. But are there people uh, that surprise you? Who are some of the people that might have surprised you who brought something into it that you never imagined they would have? I imagine Jamie was uh, a real revelation. She was, but at the same time, so was P.J. Souls on that movie. I loved what she did. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's some of the smaller parts that surprise me, continue to surprise me. I've had some actors that I've worked with that I've really loved working with, Kurt being one, obviously, but Sam Neill. Mm -hmm. I just had an experience with Jared Harris. I think it's their training, because Kurt was Disney trained, which was a lot like the things that happen in, in England. And uh, they come, they bring it all. So you don't have to elicit it. It's, it's nothing, there's nothing confusing. It's not a rewrite, necessarily, of the script, which a lot of right. American actors tend to do. We first met, I, was, I interviewed you in a tiny little studio where you were scoring Halloween at the time. And it was for a magazine or something. And it was probably the first time I was aware of a filmmaker who'd actually composed the score to his own film. Now, did that come out of financial uh, situation? I was fast and cheap. I was the <laughs> only one. You, you, when a low budget movie, you never can afford music, especially in the level I was working. So I would, could provide a carpet of music to uh, enhance the image. I mean, that was it. And you came up with a theme that's iconic now. And, you know, it's been used in so many movies and television shows and the like. And it now, you hear that, dung, 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 and you get goosebumps. You know, it's an iconic yeah. uh, musical piece. I can't play that anymore. I used to be able to really, really fly with it. Were you a schooled musician? Uh, my father tried in vain to teach me how to play the violin. And really? It was awful. <laughs> I was awful, and it was awful having him teach me. It was just pain. Really? So I so associate emotional pain with learning how to play. <laughs> but I had an ear for music, so I could play, uh, and I knew the chords. I could play without reading music. So I kind of forgot how to read music. <laughs> 
But you kept scoring over the years. Yeah, I did. So how many of your films you probably... Too many. Yeah, and in, in the last film I did, it was really hard. It was just, I was exhausted afterwards. This really takes a whole another burst of energy, another creative voice to come in. And when I was young, it was easy. Right. And not so much anymore. Uh, well, back to Halloween. Yeah, yeah. The movie's finished. Did you test screen it? No, 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 no. It just came out. It was an no. independent movie, and it became the most <laughs> successful independent movie of all time. Until Blair Witch. Until Blair Witch. Well, that's nice 20 years later. It was released uh, regionally. It wasn't released nationally. So, so you couldn't do that opening day on Halloween everywhere no. in the country. No, it came out. Kind of came out Thanksgiving, and it was bicycled around the country. And then they released it in L.A. And they moved it to San Diego. And they moved it here, there, there. <laughs> so uniformly awful reviews. The movie's not scary <laughs> until it finally really uh, reached the East Coast, and the, there was a Village Voice review, and then that kind of turned things around. So. You went from this iconic horror film, but before it came out, you were already into Elvis? Uh, before we'd finished cutting, I got a call from my agent saying, I have this three-hour TV movie. Every director in town has turned it down. Wow. It's called Elvis. I said, I'll do it, just because I loved Elvis Presley. Yeah. So, and 30 days for three hours mm -hmm. of television. And, uh, whew. That was rough. <laughs> that was rough. That was a rough go. It's a terrific movie. It's okay. It, no, it's no, too it, long. It's for its time, particularly. Uh, there weren't many good biopics uh -huh. on television in those days, and Kurt is so good. Uh -huh. And it's 360 degrees away, or 180 degrees away from Halloween. Mick, it's all the same. Yeah. It's interior or exterior, <laughs> day or night. How many people do I have in the scene? Mm -hmm. What has to happen? Mm -hmm. If you're gonna, either you're doing a rock and roll show or you're knifing somebody, you just have to approach telling the story. It's all the same. But there are different tools at work, That's right? correct, that's correct. You bring the right tools for the job. Mm -hmm. um, I, I hate to pontificate. The more difficult genres to pull off are comedies and horror films because they require, it's timing. Dramas are the easiest. You usually have people talking to each other, and you can just shoot close-ups. Yeah. And horror, f in cr creating a mood in horror films or creating the right mood in a comedy is, is hard. It's hard to do. You need a feeling for it. 